And hello everybody, it is 7 o'clock my time, which means we're going to start again with the Unhindered by Coding live stream. This is Nick, going to be here for two hours doing programming stuff. Hello, is it too? Always wonderful to see you. Thanks for joining, as always. Um, so we're going to continue working on the evolutionary computation system. Um, hopefully we'll maybe get through most of the rest of the tradification of things, converting things to traits. We'll see. Um, and then there's one performance thing I'll mention a little bit uh, at the beginning. Um, and uh, I hope things are going well for folks. If you're not familiar with it, uh, I would recommend, you pro if you're watching this, you probably are, but Advent of Code 2022. I've done two whole days. Uh, I'm not moving super fast because um, I have other things to do, like be here and do this with you folks. But fun problems and a uh, chance to play with whatever language you want because the, the answers don't have to be code. They're just numbers and things like that. Um, so like I've been doing them in both uh, closure and Rust for comparison. Um, and I found day two in Rust to be particularly interesting. Um, there was a lot of interesting type opportunities. I was sort of very aggressive about creating lots of types and doing lots of from implementations to convert things from this to that. It was very fun. So uh, definitely recommend if you're at all inclined. Um, so coming to our code, I want to mention a performance thing that happened um, first, and then we'll um, get into the tradification stuff. So I, I finally ran, been meaning to do this, haven't gotten around to it, um, finally ran some uh, benchmarking uh, to see if all this uh, tradification we were doing um, had had some profound impact on the performance. And I was surprised that, yes, indeed, the current code was quite a lot slower than the previous code. Uh, it turned out it didn't directly have anything to do with the traits. Uh, it was really, well, no, it really wasn't per se about the traits. It was about uh, uh, implementation choice. But it does mean I probably need to be tracking the performance side of things more consistently uh, as I keep making changes. And I probably need to go back and make sure I benchmark um, some key pieces at various times in the past as well so I can compare what's going on. But in particular, I found, so it was like, oh, it's slow. I don't know why, that makes me sad. So I, I generated some flame graphs, um, and it was clear that the problem was tournament selection had become really slow. It had gone from being a really minor part of the time to almost all of the time. And I was like, that's not good. What is going on? So uh, to remind folks, uh, or if you have no experience with this, which would be entirely reasonable uh, to let folks know, tournament selection... You have a population, you have a tournament size K, you choose K random individuals out of that population, and you take the best of that subset. And that's a way of selecting individuals to be parents or to be copied over from one generation to the next. Um, and uh, small tournaments are have, provide a very weak selection pressure. So if you have a tournament of size two, for example, and you have a population of a thousand individuals, the odds of either of the two that you pick being the actual best in the whole population for any given selection is really quite low. Um, and it wouldn't be unreasonable with binary selection to be getting individuals that are in even the bottom half of the population occasionally winning tournaments of just size two. On the other hand, if you have, again, if we assume population of a thousand, if you have a tournament of 100, uh, odds are that the winner of a tournament like that will be 
one of the best individuals in the overall population. Again, no guarantee it will be the best. Um, nine times out of ten, it won't act. The, if there's a single best, nine times out of ten, it wouldn't be in a tournament of size 100. But you're going to run a lot of tournaments. Um, you know, if you're doing some kind of crossover where you need two parents to generate a new child, you're generating a thousand children, you're going to do 2,000 selections out of a population of a thousand, you're likely to get the best individual quite a few times in that environment. Um, so that's what tournament selection does. Um, so tournament is a struct. It contains a size, which is the tournament size. Um, and it's got a new that takes that tournament size and makes a tournament thingy. Um, and th then it implements the selector trait, um, which we came up with a week or so ago, I think. Um, uh, and that has a single function, select, which takes a random number generator and a population and returns a, an a reference to an individual, um, where I is the type of the individual. Turns out we don't care a lot about what type I has in this instance. Um, and this is the version that I had um, that turned out to be slow. Uh, and if our population is of type VecPop, and that's just a vector population, and that's one of the things we'll work on today is um, trying to tradeify, um, introduce a population trait, and have VecPop implement that trait, and then replace the references to the specific implementation VecPop um, everywhere with this new trait. So that's one of the key goals for today. Um, but right now, our population is a VecPop, and we, we've been using choose multiple, which uh, le chooses randomly a set of, a subset of things out of a collection. So you specify the size or the amount, the number of things that you want, and it will give you back that many things out of your collection. Um, and uh, it, needs to act on either iterate iter things that iterate iterables or it needs to act on um, vectors or slices so basically arrays um, and if we have vecpop um, and well so there's the question of how do we get the things out of the vecpop and there are there were two, no, there was one way before, is empty and size or irrelevant, that just gave us an iterator. So it was a really general way of accessing the elements of a population. Um, we could iterate over them. That's all we could do. Um, and so that was what's going on here. We're taking the population. We're calling dot iter to get the iterator over it. We're calling choose multiple. Turns out that actually gives us a, if you call choose multiple on an iter, iter you get a vec back. Um, in other circumstances, you get different things, but you get a vec back here. So then you have to call iter again to turn that into an iterator. Then you can call max uh, to get the largest thing. I is um, implements ord, as we say here. So we can call max on it to say, what's the biggest one? And then unwrap, which is safe because the population is not empty. Max returns none if the collection that you're maxing over uh, is empty. So this works. Um, I did some benchmarking, as I mentioned, and here's the timing. These times are for a tournament of size two, tournament of size 10, and tournament of size 100. And you'll notice with the other implementations, things get slower as the tournaments get bigger, but they don't get slower here. They're almost exactly the same. And I think that's because 
I haven't dug into the details of choose multiple, but I think if choose multiple has an iter and doesn't know anything else about the underlying storage, it basically has to go through the entire collection and decide as it goes which subset it's going to return, but it has to actively touch and think about every single individual in the collection, which means, which would be consistent with the idea that, or the data that says that all the pot tournament sizes take the same amount of time because we're going to go through the whole thousand individuals. That's the dominant aspect of the timing and the bookkeeping of keeping track of two versus 10 versus a hundred is reasonably minimal. Um, and so things take about the same amount of time. They're a little slower with the big tournaments. I don't know if that's noise or if that's because the bookkeeping for a tournament of size hundred is in fact a little bigger. Um, but you know, either way, I think this having an iterator here and then choose multiple acting on that iter, that's what makes this really slow. Um, and before we'd had basically direct access to the population as a vector. Um, and I went ahead and for the purposes of timing, added a couple of deprecated, cause I think I want to get rid of them. Um, uh, methods to just experiment with the timing. And one is individuals that actually just gives us directly a reference to the vector of individuals um, inside the vec pop. And the other is slice, um, which returns a slice of individuals, which in this case is the whole population, um, just to see if that made any difference. And it turns out it doesn't. Um, that both both using slice and using individuals here um, have very similar times. Um, and I'm guessing that the differences is uh, our noise, I think. I don't really know for sure, but um, I, I'm not convinced that these differences are actually meaningful. Um, and these are both cleaner, uh, arguably, because they don't require converting to an iterator and then converting to another iterator. Um, it turns out, let me comment one of these back in. Um, we'll just do this one. That in both of these, if you have a slice or um, the actual vector, then choose multiple doesn't return a vector. It returns a slice choose iter. Um, which basically is a lazy iterator because it has direct access. It has random constant time access to the underlying body of objects. Um, it doesn't need to build them all and then return them. It can give you one and then give you another and give you another as you need them. Um, we don't use that feature in any meaningful way, but it does that. So it, it returns this different type, but the key thing is that because with either individuals or slice, it does get constant time access to the individuals. Instead of having to go through all of them, it can just go through and grab 100 or 10 or whatever individuals um, and pass them on. And then we can call max and unwrap on that. Um, so both of these are definitely faster. Uh, and then... Uh, of the same speed, basically, but without requiring adding a new um, method, uh, without requiring adding either slice or individuals, we could also call as slice on the iter. Uh, and that turns out in this case to be basically the same speed. Um, so this speed's about the same as the other two. Um, so we can take this iterator, convert it to a slice, and then choose multiple again, has constant time access to elements in the vector, and it's able to just do the thing and do it quickly. So I'm going to leave it as this for now, um, unless somebody's got other thoughts on the matter. Um, I think as we 
turn the population into a trait, um, then we'll need, need to make some other choices. Um, in particular, I think we'll need uh, tournaments going to need that population to implement something that gives us slices um, or equivalent um, at, to maintain the speed. Um, but we'll start here and see where we go. So questions, comments, thoughts on any of that before we actually start in on um, implementing population as a trait? Okay, then, um, and just to keep Clippy from yelling at me, I'm going to also comment that line out. Okay, so um, let's actually look at generation quickly. So, so generation has three fields. It holds a population, it holds a selector, and it holds a child maker. Um, yeah, I was actually surprised at how much the timing differed as well. And it, I mean, it's a lot. Um, I didn't comment on that, but um, this is uh, a difference of like 100%. Um, or a thousand, yeah. Factor of uh, 100 is a better way to think about it. Um, time slower, like it really is a lot slower, um, which given that you have to traverse the whole thing isn't super surprising, but yeah, it definitely made a big difference. Um, so yeah, so generation, um, we hold a population, a selector and a child maker. We have converted selector and child maker into traits. So selector is a trait, child maker is a trait. Now they both have these uh, dynamic reference businesses going on and Zitsu has shared uh, in Discord, um, I think at least a week ago, um, maybe more, a neat trick for avoiding that, and we'll want to come back and do that, um, uh, which is basically to have uh, a, a reference to a selector implement the interface from the trait selector, and a reference to a child maker implement child maker. Um, so then we can just say selector is little s selector is big S selector, and uh, child maker is Ch big C child maker, and then it, we can slide in one of these dynamic references when we need to. Um, but the, the main thing for today is that population is still not a trait, it's a straight up struct. So vec pop is a struct, and we would like to introduce a population trait that we can put here, um, and then use that everywhere uh, and get rid of the VecPop bit here. And when we do that, fingers crossed, um, we will also be able to um, get rid of EC individual everywhere because that's a specific concrete type um, and it would be the goal here is that this would ultimately, uh, generation would be genericized over a single type I um, for individual in the same way that the selector is generic over a single type I. Uh, oh, generation, come back. Um, so we'd have generation be generic over a single type I and then these things would all just become I instead of EC individual. And we would have this like beautifully generic uh, notion of a generation. Um, and then we hopefully can clean up most of this uh, specific types floating around in here. And those would all push out to lib.rs where 
the sort of domain is. Um, ah, so Zitsu thinks that we might have to replace this with I before we turn population into a trait. Why would that need to be the case? Is the idea that, whoa, go away. I've got to turn that off. Is the concern that the type of the individual is going to be an associated type with the population and not a generic type? Although I don't immediately see why that would be the case. Um, I mean, it's worked for us to have this be a generic um, type here. So I don't know that I see why that would be. But we can press on and see what happens. And if you're right, presumably it will become clear. Um, so we're going to want... Some Something like this, and a population, presumably we want, it'd be nice to have probably at least these three things for starters, and then we can figure out what else we want as we go. But I think we're going to want, want to know if population is empty, we want to know its size, and it would be nice to iterate over its members. So let's do that. Uh, so we don't want that. Uh, uh, uh. Boom. And then the last one. Boom. So we'll have an is empty. Um, so you think I should be an associated type. Do you have a sense of what the advantage of that's going to be? Um... guess certainly we won't have to be saying population angle bracket I everywhere um, so you had a nice way of putting this in some previous conversation where a generic type is specified outside and a associated type is inside. So you specify, how did, how did you phrase it? It was really good. I don't remember the, the wording now, but um, generic types are like inputs and associated types are like outputs. So a generic type is like an input. We're handing a type to a thing and saying, here's the type you get to use, deal with it. And an associated type is like an output. It's encapsulated in the thing and we can ask what it is. So on the outside, we don't necessarily know what it is, but we can ask the type for that piece of information. So like iter, we... No, it's not iter. Actually, iter, I think, is generic. Iterator um, is has the associated type. So if we have an iterator, we can ask it, hey, what is your item? And it will tell us. So we can be handed it without us knowing what its internal is. And so you're thinking that population, we ought to be able to have a population 
without knowing or caring what the individual type is. And if we need to know, we can ask the population, hey, what is your individual type? But if we didn't need to know, we never had to know. Whereas if we make it a generic, we have to provide that type. So we have to know what that type is. Well, let's try that. Let us let us see if we can make that happen. Because actually, I'm 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 beginning to think that that would make sense. Type individual, and then you don't think we want that guy there. And that we will instead implement some trait um, as needed that will provide access. Okay, let's try it. See what happens. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, probably putting as little in here as possible is reasonable. And then we'll um, see where it goes. And so then VecPop I should implement. Okay, so actually that's basically these two guys here. Oops, impl I VecPop I. So I'm splitting this impl block up because these first two, these are. Um, Uh, the implementation of um, the is empty in the size. Uh, now we're missing the individual. And that's not right. Oh. Uh, I assume this is not going to be helpful. No. So, but we're going to have to say what the type. Is it just that implement the missing item type individual? Oh, that goes here. Type individual equals I. Boom, boom, boom. And we don't have pub anymore because they're in a trait, so you don't need them. And voila. So now we've moved um, those two guys there. We've got that has created some other issues. Generation, what are we shouting about? Um, no method name size found for struct that vec pop. Oh, this is too generic. And so we don't know that this is, but it does know that it's a VEC pop. Oh, it's just a use. I get it. Yeah, thank you, Azitsu. So it just doesn't know because we haven't imported the crate, the population trait, um, uh, population, population. Since we hadn't imp imported the trait, it didn't know that VecPop had a size. And that'll probably be true in other places. Um, 
population and vecpop and what else isn't compiling oh lots of things various other selectors are not compiling and population we're going to need population in most of these places anyway eventually so this is not super surprising population and i think we've got oh our tests uh need population back pop okay everybody compiles again and it runs we hope ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, da, ba. yes happy day okay so where population go we'll be open to a million things wah, wah, wah. let's close that and that and that and that and that okay so we introduced this trait and vecpop now implements that trait and so the trick now is to, to try to replace references to vecpop with the trait whenever possible so instead of having things depend on this particular type we want them to dep depend on this new population type uh, in fact i think it probably makes sense in my brain um oh yes you're right i think you did that for for me before um and i don't, uh, so let's see we can um return self dot size is zero and then vecpop doesn't need this anymore and voila that's nifty and just to be paranoid Ooh. yeah so i think i'm going to commit that partly because it dribbled out all over the world and might as well deal with that right away so so all we've changed is add add population trait this has vecpop implement that new trait and we needed to then import that trait into pretty much every file that used vecpop in an interesting way boom okay now so we're basically looking for where who uses vecpop but doesn't need it to be vecpop and i think the selectors are probably a good place to start um, because they're gonna have to deal with populations we want them to deal more generally than specifically vecpop and um we that's going to raise the question of how do we get access to the uh, individuals in the population because the selectors have to do that so i think dealing with selector would seem to be reasonable um, um trying to think of how to try to do this incrementally 
Um, I feel like we could do rename symbol select backpop introduce a new probably still going to need the lifetime and the population instead of being a vec pop will be a population And now we're going to need, this is going to have to be uh, population. So the, actually this is going to have to be some type P that implements population, right? So I think I'm going to need this. This is going to be a type P. This is then going to return P colon colon uh, individual Something like that no oh that might just be an import hey so now that'll break all the um, So you you were thinking of just changing this to BP and not messing around with the two versions. And I guess the question is are so why are the I understand I expected this to break. Why are these guys breaking? Oh, uh, uh, uh. oh object safe. Oh, is that going to be a problem? That's going to make me cry a lot because I don't think I really grasp that as well as I would like. Uh, gotcha. So, so short version is I shouldn't have actually tried to do both of these things at once. That just seems, well, okay. Let's undo, 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 undo. So then this is going to be um, basically what I had. Um, P implements population, population, and this is going to be of type P, and this is going to return P individual. And we have to import that okay and we've blown up all kinds of things shocking the p must be on the trait not on the method oh so this is going to need to be that and then that's going to go away. And I am going to need to say um, right, right, right. Sure. And I guess then if I just get the one thing here, I probably don't need a where clause. I was thinking it was going to bring in a where clause, but actually for something that simple, it's probably best not to. So selector no longer depends on I, B, 
because I is inside the population um, as here. So it d depends on a population and the population is going to provide the individual type that we need. So we'll take a reference to a population of type P and we return an individual of type P colon colon individual. And from that, all manner of things are going to break. It will be wildly exciting. Um, but, oh, oh, actually, but only the selectors break. That's interesting. Because a second ago, like, lots of other stuff was breaking. Um, oh. Is that just because I need to say these and they will then break? Perhaps. Yeah, no, they're not breaking. It's just the selectors are breaking. And I expected them to. Well, that's cool. So that's interesting. Like, Childmaker... Oh, I guess we have an implementation of Childmaker down at the bottom here. And so it's going to take a population. Oh, and it's taking a specific population of VecPop. So I think because everybody else takes VecPops, they don't sort of know or care that oh yeah save everybody save out save all there we go so um everybody that uses it is specifying a vec pop and so since that implement Men's population, it doesn't matter. So we, but we got to fix all the selectors. So let's fix the selectors. Um, so this is now we're implementing P of type population selector of type P for best. And this is going to be P, and this is going to be P colon colon individual, and that's all that needed to be changed. That's cool. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, because we we were talking about trying to get rid of best individual as a thing in the population and even in the generation. I think it's still in the generation. Um, best, yeah. Um, so we're talking about getting rid of both of these. Here, why don't I deprecate this as a way of reminding myself that we want to make that disappear. And we'll just, since we're in population right now, uh, let's take your suggestion and move this into best um, boom and the other asserts better so voila and then go back to population and we will get rid of this that's probably going to create some compilers or not Maybe not. Maybe we had worked out most of the um, places where we were using that. I don't know. I don't remember. But the compiler will yell at us if things are not happy. So, um, so here we're implying R and I. Actually, I'm gonna let's do that one later because that one's more complicated. Here, this is P population population 
selector P and then this is going to need to be P and this is going to need to be P individual. But I really do feel like there ought to be a mechanical refactoring that would allow us to do this in a more mechanical way because what I'm doing is clearly quite mechanical. Um, and I feel like a tool ought to be able to sort of do what I'm doing uh, all in one fell swoop. Um, but whatever. Okay. So that one weighted. So instead of I, that's taking P colon pop population and selector of population for, okay, so um, weighted is depending on I, and that's going to need to become P. Um, and P and P and these don't have to say that they're population because we don't need to ever go inside them. I think it's only down in the select that we'll have to, oops, I think I, you know, I deleted the wrong thing, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think for these, the new and the with selector, we don't ever need to specify that P is actually a population type. It can be anything. Here, we do need P to be population because we need to access the internal type P right here, or individual associated type right here. Oh, and we need to probably import. Yeah. And I must have just done the import by hand on some of the other ones. Oh, no, that's P. What am I doing? P. Okay. So that one all compiles. Yeah. Oh, we don't need VecPop here anymore. And I bet we probably have, a, yeah, we probably have that same unnecessary import. Uh, ooh, interesting. Individual went away. That's cool, actually. So random doesn't even have to care that that's an individual. It's just a... Th oh, no. It never needed to care because that was a type that's now inside P. Okay. And tournament... and weighted we took care of. And so all that's left is lexcase. So lexcase p population selector of type p. Uh, now let's Hmm, we're going to need some of this at some point. I'm actually going to remove it all um, and let the compiler tell me what we need, when we need it. Um, but I think individual is going to need to have some properties here 
that uh, okay yeah so here we need some way of getting the elements of the population and one way would be to have that iter method um, Another would be to say that P has to implement some iterable trait. Um, so it's it's a, you would propose not having the iter method. Sort of some ways the simple solution here is to go put the iter method back into the trait, because then we get it here and we get to move on. Um, but if we don't have it, what were you proposing instead? Okay. I'm totally down for that plan. Um, so let's see population. Um, get herself. Uh, and this returned a iter i, iter individual, boom, boom, boom. And so then Vecpop is going to pick up this piece. So basically that's going to move up to here oh go away and down and that uh, and something else in population isn't happy what isn't happy in population 21 Oh, this would be self colon colon individual. Yeah. Um, and can we deprecate at the level of a trait? We can't. So we could do that as a way of reminding ourselves that is it so at least thinks it should go away. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, and now, oh, but that, oh. Ah. So we've got a bound here that's not being met. So we need P individual to implement ORD. So let's put in a WHERE clause. P individual is ORD. Haha! -ha. Made that go away. Happy day. Um, now given that I'm got a where clause I think we'll do this comma there we go okay so that takes care of that one best also is going to require ord actually probably exactly the same so be cheap and just grab it. And then we could get rid of the this. Okay. So best requires. Oh. So I actually want self.iter because we don't have individuals. And 
that wasn't happy. Self dot, oh, it's population dot iter. Why did I have self anything here? That's weird. Yeah, okay. So we're using our deprecated iter method. We max, we unwrap. That looks great. Well, Alexa case. Uh, where are we? Ah, now we get to the problem. So test results has to implement the capital T test results So individual has to implement test results. And we don't have a trait for that. We just have a, uh, where did test results go? Wada, 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 wada. Yeah, it's just a, no, 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 that's, so it's just a straight up struct. So, I feel like we really want individual to implement a trait here that the thing to say would be something like where P individual implements test results trait, which is a terrible name. Um, but then that test results trait would ensure that we have the ability to get a test results element out of do p population individual uh gotch oh sure so we could say individual equals but now we got to say what it is equals and so I guess we could say EC individual oops individual and then we'd have to specify G and R so we don't really care anywhere about G I don't think but we do need R Oh, I think maybe we're going to have to. But I don't want to have to actually specify G and R here. That seems. Um, oh, yeah. So the test results are. Thank you. Oops. Ah. Oh, yeah. And how many, so close, 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 close. Now, that, oh, and we need ORD. Okay, we definitely need the WHERE clause. This has gotten way out of control. Um, so this, so that's that thing, and R needs to be ORD, and is that it? Oh, that's it. Okay. Now, That works. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see. I see your point that this does work, but it isn't where we want to end up. 
we want really this to be um, to do we want p individual to implement some new trait that gives us uh, access to uh, test results. But this will work for now. So, okay. And that Lex case now works. That's cool. Um, so let's move on to generation. And best individual doesn't exist anymore. Maybe we we'll just get rid of this. Does anybody call it? I bet somebody does, but I bet we can just fix it where they do. Gets called in one place. Yeah, I think we could just get rid of it, to be honest with you. Um, and we'll deal with the problem later. Because I don't want to have to think about that right now. Just focus on this. Uh, so there's it. Okay, right here. Select. Get parent. Uh, has a select door, right? Yeah. Oh, populations of vec. Well, that's okay. That should be okay. So select takes. Oh, uh, no. So population is a vec pop. Select takes a population as its second argument. And a vec pop implements that. So we ought to be able to pass a vec pop in here. And we should need to wrap the EC individual with a vec pop in the dyne selector. Oh, it's up here. Um, yeah, right, right, right. This used to be an individual, it's now a population. So we need to say, no, is this just an import problem? Uh, oh, it's a dying prop. No, I don't believe that. Does that have to be dying as well? Ooh, okay. That's weird. Um, oh, I see. Yes, 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 yes. Um, we want a concrete thing. Duh. Um, Yeah. And that is a population. Okay, yeah, I was overcomplicating it. So our selector is a selector and the population type is a vec pop of EC individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And so that, but that's gonna, f that same thing is going to happen like here and possibly other places, like basically everywhere that we had a thing, no, cell selector, uh, make child, oh, make child, may have to 
Does it need to be changed? Make child's going to need to take a population as well. So this wants to be a dying population of not Does that work? Oh, we got to import. And then the implementation of make child is going to be broken when we get there, but um, that wants the I change to P and take Oh, sure. No point in having this here when I could just pass. Oh, but we're going to need, so we would need something like this so that we can tell the selector. Oh, no, the selector acts on a population too now, doesn't it? Duh. So we don't even need that. I think we can just say P, and then this is ampersand p and this is p here and it returns aha uh -huh. we do need p to be of type population because we need to be able to say p Oh, man, individual here. OK. Oh, and the ma that made all the generation stuff happy. That's interesting. Really? Oh, so getting the types right up here plus getting the types right in child maker um, made pretty much everything good and now aha yes so this, this is going to have to be a vec pop Yeah. So now everybody is a vec pop of EC individuals because everybody depends on the population. And then we'll ultimately put a P in here and that'll like make all this go away. Um, so let's go to lib and see how much needs to be changed here child maker that's going to be vec pop of ec individual and this is going to be vec pop of ec individual and that didn't fix everything. Uh, oh yeah, we still got the best, indivi best individual problem. So I need to, outside this loop, uh, let's probably do it up here. Let best select, I'll just call it best, uh, equal best best I think is just an empty struct it is uh, so 
default. No, I would have to probably derive defaults or something. Oh, I guess I can just say best open close curly. There you go. Yeah. And then here I can say best dot select range and population and it's generation dot population And this doesn't exist, so we have to define that. Let RNG equals brand thread RNG, and that's going to, have to be mutable. And this is going to be a, have to be a mutable reference. Um, oh. Oh, oh, interesting. <coughs> so, I, I didn't know that. So if I remove this here, that probably needs a semicolon to say that it's done. Then I can just say best.select. Really? That's rather nifty. So then I'm not going to have to declare one of these. And this becomes a capital B. Hmm. Very cool. I didn't know you could do that. And then this is not working. Oh, I need a reference. Is that all that needs to happen? Hey! Okay. So that gives us a reference to an EC individual. Yada, yada, yada. That's great. Um, and now child maker is grumpy. Uh, yikes. Yeah, this is where the error messages get to be when you've got all these big nested types and of course, the fact that I chose this ginormous name doesn't help. Um, fix the gener... Oh, the generation file did get broken. I thought the generation file was fixed. Um, oh, right here. And maybe they're related. So, oh, right here, VecPop. So this could be, in fact, the source of the problem. Um, hey, that made it, good job, well done. Thank you. Who knows how much time you saved me there? A lot. Um, now, there's like a... Um, well, not a bazillion clippy warnings, but there are some clippy warnings. Let me do a little housekeeping. Uh, and then we'll run it, make sure that it actually works, but it looks good. Lexicase. Um, oh yeah, we're still referring to VecPop. We don't need to. And best and that's a deprecated that's a deprecated and that's a deprecated we knew about all those so huzzah now does it work does it work does it work does it work it appears to work um except actually there are some compiler errors in the tests um that I, oh, yeah, right there. Uh, where are 
are you? Um, line one, four, oh. Line 114. Aha. So I think it was imported up high somewhere. And I removed it because it wasn't being used outside of the tests. And then, aha. Uh, and then everything else is deprecated. Is that true? Deprecated, 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 deprecated. And the tests pass. Yay! Awesome. So, the tests all pass. Oh, the benches. Yes, one of the benches is broken. Because we call best individual. Ugh. Hmm. I don't know if this is trying to tell me something or not. But we will um cuz I'm not going to be able to chain Um, I don't know whether I actually need any of this. I don't think I do. I think I was worried that somehow lazy evaluation would mean we wouldn't construct the population unless I looked inside of it. And I think I don't really need any of that. So I think I could actually probably just get rid of all three of these things. And then that would both simplify the test and make that problem go away. Which would be kind of nifty. Okay. Now, I think that the tests still pass. And we can still run, oops, ah. We can still do a run, and the warnings are all about deprecation. Yeah, okay, so I think we're good. I think we can commit, Wee. What time is it? Oh, a little left, right, we're in pretty good shape. Um, so, okay, so that is about best. Probably should have done a separate commit for that. This is moving to the population trait. This is about doing the population trait. Um, this is all, oh, well, that's about best. Um, so actually maybe I'll commit the two best pieces together, um, along with getting rid of that. And there's probably a similar chunk there. Yeah. Let's see if we can get rid of the, uh, Getting rid of best and then lib this part here and construction stage the whole file. So that's all population trait, that's all population trait, that's all population trait. That's all population trait, except this bit here 
is not. So that's in lib. So actually that bit really should get staged. And that's all population trait, population trait, uh, population trait, and population trait, except for this part right he here, is actually in replacing best individual. So really this goes with this other commit. And that goes, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, remove best individual methods and use best selector instead. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, best. Good catch. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, removes the best individual method from popular uh, vec pop and generation and converts their use to using the best selector um, uh, yeah I think that probably oh I guess we should say in construction benchmarks, who cannot spell? Um, we just removed the use of best individual because I don't think it's actually necessary. Uh, and that's getting rid of that, and that's using it, and that's getting rid of it, and that's redefining it. Cool. Okay. Boom. And then all of the rest of this is introducing um, the population trait and changing everybody to be with that program. Um, So really, actually, it's about getting the selectors to use the population trait and then that dribbled across and we had to do generation and child maker. Uh, because doing selector, okay. So. Use population trait. Um, this started as having selector use the new population trait instead of just VecPop, um, but it. Um, with all the attendant changes to the various implementations of selector. Um, it turns out that this also required updating both generation and child maker to use the new trait as well. Ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Okay, that's nifty. Now, um, close you. 
So population now VecPop is the goal would be to try to get rid of the references to VecPop in other places. And the selector universe is all good now and doesn't ever talk about VecPop. So doesn't even import it. So we can close all those guys. Ooh, this still tournament. Why does tournament talk about VecPop? Uh, oh, that's in, that's in uh, benchmarking. Totally not what we care about. Whew. Um, and random doesn't refer to VecPop. And weighted doesn't refer to VecPop. And LexCase doesn't refer to VecPop. Uh, although it does still have this business. That's going to have to be dealt with. So I'll leave that open. Um, selector doesn't do anything. Okay. So uh, lib and childmaker and generation are all potentially going to have to change. Um, let's set this aside for a hot second and see if we can do so is this where we would actually make the change to generation so that generation population here should be a dyne reference to population and oh, actually it's uh p right and we add p population here Now that is gonna, no dine, no reference. Ah, okay. And then Selector, can we just put P here? And P here. Ah. And then we're gonna have the same business here. Okay, and I guess we don't need GNR anymore, so we should be deleting them as we go as well. And then this is going to be selector P. Uh, now we're going to get into needing properties. And actually, do we refer to... Yeah, we still use A here. But we'll turn these into S that implements selector. But we'll do that in a bit. Um, so we would say P... Pop Oops, population and P 
now this is going to be vec pop oh this is going to be p and this is going to be a selector of p and this is going to be a child maker of p and we didn't need to specify any or stuff okay that's interesting ah maybe here because this is in the same impl block maybe this is where something's going to happen in which case this probably should be in its own impl block um Or, yeah, so this is going to be, this is going to return a P individual. Oh, and that's all that needs to happen. Well, that's cool. Um, so, let's lose all the stuff. P population. I mean, at some point, we're going to have to pay the piper somewhere on some of these things. Um, but maybe not yet. Uh, weird. So there was all those. Maybe some of these other compiler errors are hiding some things because I feel like we are going to have to know that we can send for example stuff and we just probably are it's too confused about some other things to yell at us yet aha now we finally get an error oh yes and now these errors popped back up so this is where we're going to need to know things but that's just like the first place we need to know something um so uh p cannot be shared safely between threads so we need p to implement send now do we need p to implement send or do we need p individual to implement send not clear to me i would have before We feel like P sync P individual send. P cannot be shared safely between threads. So P needs to be sync. Interesting. Ah! Sink. Whoa! Ah. Blew up the world. P from... Oh! Yeah, so we removed... We didn't do anything with the from iterators. Um... So we need now P needs to implement from parallel iterator, uh, which VecPop does. Um, from parallel iterator. And that takes a thing. So it's going to be an iterator over P individual. Yes. Awesome. So P needs to be sync and we need to be able to make one from a parallel iterator of individuals and individuals have to be send because they have to move between threads. So I don't know that I've ever understood because I've never done any homework on it, the difference between sync and... I mean, I get that send requires things that need to be able to move, 
Typeforce is safe to share references between threads because everybody's going to, each thread is going to be looking into the population that we're building from. So that has to be sync so that the, we don't get race conditions uh, when the different threads are looking into that type. Ah, okay, that's cool. Whereas send is about actually moving the things. So we can actually copy things across thread boundaries or pass ownership of them is probably more accurate. Um, cool. And now here we're going to need, in fact, actually really, I should just say population plus, and I would guess that sync really probably ought to be at the end of that list. So P is a population that can be built from a parallel iterator and is sync. And then here we're going to need something similar. In fact, it's exactly the same, uh, except we don't need sync and we don't need send. Um, and it's from iterator, not parallel iterator. Ah, from iterator and we don't need the sync. And we don't need to say that individual can send. Ha ha, compiles. So exciting. Now we go back to lib and we see what broke. And okay, all sorts of things broke. So selector, the trait bound vec rule population is not satisfied. So when we are constructing these guys, the trait The trait bound vec bool population is not satisfied. Um, oh, so you think it's actually down here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep. So this is, and you're clearly better at this than I am. I find myself not looking in the right place. for where the problem is. And I'll try to, and the, the error message where I'm looking really doesn't help. Um, and I don't necessarily think to scroll down and see if it's, or look at a different file even, and see if the problem's actually somewhere else. And so I clearly need to learn, because there's something about these error messages that's telling you, oh, go look somewhere else. And I'm not seeing that. Um, and that is obviously, oh, this is going to be, what? Vecpop takes EC individual of bit string and test results error. Yoza. Holy moly. I think the, does the whole thing really compile? Um, I think it, it does. Oops, I meant to run it. It does. Now, there's some warn, a whole bunch of warnings. Um, a lot of them are unused imports. Well, actually, just the first one. Um, and then there's a lot of deprecated, 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 deprecated. 
So there was just that first unused imports, and that is in generation. Generation. Boom, ba -doom, ba -doom. Hey, we're no longer referring to EC individual, and we're no longer referring to VecPop. That is cool. That is very shiny. Okay. Um, so we definitely should commit because that was a lot of change, but only in two files. Um, so we changed generation. So it's generic in the new population trait. And then that bled across a bunch of different places and required, oh, just that one change in lib. That's interesting. I would have, it felt like we changed more. Um, so, oops. Um, generation to use new population trait. Um, uh, generation now is generic in a single type P that implements population uh, instead of G R um, and uh, that's really sort of the thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the main thing to say. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Cool. Zippity doo da. Um. So then. Uh, this got dealt with. I don't know why that's still there. That's very old and stale. The dangers of stale comments. Um, and I think the score situation has changed as well. Um, I'll leave that alone and that alone. Okay, so then um oh yeah populations pub oh and we just did turn that into a trait so let's make that not pub and see what bad things happen um two things happen in lib so we get the population here just to find out whether it's empty or not. And here to pass it to this selector. Hmm. Those are the only two uses in the whole thing. Well, that's interesting. So, yeah, certainly could. And that's the simplest thing. I sort of feel like, given how little it's used, it's almost like there's a another solution that doesn't expose the details of the um, Uh, no, 
But I guess we're not really exposing. Oh. Is that just that? Yes, okay. Um, oh, uh, and we don't need the lifetime, you say. Okay. And I guess this doesn't really expose anything because all it says is we're going to return a thing of type P, which doesn't provide any... Um, Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be uh, kind of important. Um, oh, hey. Oh, I need an ampersand, right, because I want a reference. So I think this kind of, I, yes, definitely don't want it to be a circular call. Um, yeah. I, it feels like I'm kind of giving some information away, but really, because all we know is that P implements population, we're not really giving anything away. So I think I need to like, just get over that. Um, and then boop and fingers crossed. That is not everything. There is another error somewhere. Oh, right here. Um, generation probably doesn't need the ampersand because we're returning a reference. Look at that. So much better. And everything compiles. Does everything run? Oh, I did Clippy again. Run. Yep. So I think I'll, um, so we made that private and added a, a get method, um, or encapsulate, uh, generation population makes that field private and adds a get well a dot population method to access it two awesome you saw another reference to best with curly braces hmm oops i wanted to look for best right there yep and I definitely don't want that nonsense oh no I lost it where was it it's in lib Best right there. Oh, so I think I made, I tried making two of them. Oh, oh, that's because this, I already, I'd already made one up here. Um, because we were using that. So can I just say ampersand best? That's not going to make sense, right? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good catch. Um, so run. Yes. Uh, commit that. Little change. Uh... Remove use of best. 
since we removed the curly braces from the definition of best, we can just use best.select everywhere. And this removes uh, one old style reference. Now I wonder if um, Lexicase has some stuff. Random does not. Tournament has some internal structure. Weighted has internal structure. So random presumably could also lose these things, right? And then references, is that gonna work? Apparently not. Oh, maybe I just never use it. Uh, it's in writing. Yeah, I think maybe it's just never used. Okay, which is why it wasn't showing up. But probably ought to be done. Ba -ba -ba. Um, actually, I'm going to amend that to the previous commit since um, also removes the curly braces from the definition of random uh, since it doesn't uh, have any fields. Boom. Okay. So then we have the Lex case problem. Well, problem's a strong word. But I think we want to think about what's going on there. Okay, so um, so this says P will only or Lex case will only work if our population is EC individuals with test result. Um, and I think we want well. Okay, do. Mm, Let's try that. And it's getting, it's, we're seven minutes before the end. And I know for some people it's very late. Um, so maybe we don't launch into this, but let's try your suggestion. Um, so P individual uh, P population P individual equals, oh, type, not colon, uh, individual test results equal. So let's look at individual. What is going on there? Uh, oh, because we've all tradified it, so maybe it's enough to say test results, something about test results. So test results is test results of R. Hey, and then G can go away. In fact, it wants G to go away. And I might now change the order of those two things. And nice. So that because individual was a trait, we could specify the that inner component of it without getting bogged down and having to provide the genome or introduce a new trait, we just need to say we're going to use this trait 
with this component has to be this kind of thing. That is very cool. I like that a lot. Uh, that's a much better solution than what I was going to do. Uh, well done. And then this goes away. So now we don't refer to EC individual here. Um, so this case refers to individual population and test results. It needs to do all of those things. So that looks beautiful. That looks really nice. Um, very, very cool. So I'm going to commit that. Uh, oh, yeah, the to-do can go away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The to-do, which was overly complicated, no longer needs to be there. Um, remove lex case dependency on EC individual um, by using the associated type by specifying that the associated type individual um, uh, test results had to be test results are we could eliminate the reference to EC individual. EC individual. Okay. Now, I wonder... So this... Where are we? This ties test results to being this very specific thing we could even generalize that and have some kind of trait for that but I think that's a problem for another day and I don't know in fairness if there's any real need for it or if that would just be generalizing for the sake of generalizing which is probably not good um so that, I think, is a pretty awesome place to wrap up. Now, what... So, I guess the other thing... I don't want to probably deal with it right now. But we probably want to bring back your trick of getting rid of these dying things. Um, and then that would clean this up and simplify these signatures. Um, so I think that's the next thing to do, probably. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. So, yay! We got lots done! We got lots done. And over the past three, four, um, five, I think, actually, because I think we started this last Wednesday, so that would be five full sessions. So over five sessions, we have managed to turn pretty much every significant thing into a trait. Um, integration isn't a trait. Uh, oh, yeah, we've got a... Thank you. We do have to think about the iter problem, um, and that's got to be dealt with. So, yeah, if you got ideas there, I'd be happy to chat on Discord. We can pick that up um, on Saturday. Yeah, so I'll be back. Um, so Saturday, we'll have two sessions, 10 to noon and 2 to 4 p.m., and then Tuesday morning, 10 to noon, and then back again next week, um, all Central Standard Time. 
Um, so yeah, we'll have to do the iter um, and um, uh, get rid of dine. Oh wow, uh, dine in generation. So I have to do those two things. And then, is there any reason to make generation a trait? Mm, I can't see one off the top of my head. Um, but I guess if, as we're working through things, maybe it'll occur to us. And between now and Saturday, I will try to do um, some more benchmarking um, to see kind of what things looked like before we started turning everything into traits uh, and now um, so that we can track that a little better. Should have been doing that from the beginning, but uh, I didn't. Um, and uh, yeah, and then when that's all done, we can actually start doing the genetic programming stuff. Whew, that'd be very exciting. Okay, uh, I think it's after nine o'clock. I will call that a win. You are awesome human beings. Thank you again, as always. I think that was super productive. I'm very happy. Um, and I look forward to seeing people on Saturday. Talk to you later. Ciao.